Continuing our huge story tonight, the indictment of President Donald Trump. We've already heard from Joe DeGeneva, former U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, and discuss the dubious legal grounds for this unprecedented move. Let's continue in that vein with another lawyer, but also a political analyst and senior contributor over at townhall.com. Our friend, you know him, you love him, Kurt Schlichter. Kurt, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, thanks for having me on this historic and very, very stupid evening. Yeah, I, you know, I, I mentioned uh, your status as a lawyer. You do understand the legal aspects of this. Uh, from your perspective, is there anything here, really? I mean, it seems to me like this is a case that's already uh, like multi-time loser. I'll put it this way. If I had to put it to the equivalent of a biblical uh, chapter, it would be the story of Onan. <laughs> ah, I remember now. Thank exactly. You. Look, is, it, makes some, they, they, it feels good, but it will come to nothing. And in the end, it'll degrade everyone. Thank uh, you for keeping this, it in biblical perspective for our Salem audience, Kurt. That's all he's Biblical perspective. I, I could have gone with Sodom and Gomorrah, but uh, uh, that, <laughs> we knew it would be old well, apt. Look, well, listen, we, this is we should laugh case. about this and we should mock it because this is purely and brazenly political, isn't it? Yeah, it's not, look. You have me here as a lawyer, Larry, but why? Because it's not a legal case. It's a, it's a legal case. It's a joke. I don't do criminal law, but it took me about two seconds to examine their theory. And it's a joke. It's ridiculous. And that makes it much, much worse. It's a political attempt to crush your political opponent and jail him like they do over like in Banana Republic. But it's becoming more and more common. It's kind of a color revolution kind of book. Uh, they're doing it in Israel, you know, prosecuting Netanyahu on some convoluted baloney uh, charge. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the same time, they have a bunch of uh, hyperactive uh, sociopaths uh, uh, violently demonstrating, which we have also had today. Uh, yeah. th this is bad. And it's, you know, it's dangerous because, you know, you create instability by undermining the foundations of the very institutions you're using, that's not going to end well. You know, it's interesting. After all the fallout from January 6th, and then you, you of course, uh, appropriately talk about the, the storming and insurrection of state capitals uh, in America today over transgender policies, uh, you talk about the left's reaction to your fictional books, a fictional account of a dystopian future. Uh, you talk about what they claim Donald Trump was going to do when he became president of the United States you know, jailing his political enemies, they always point to things like that, Kurt. And they say, you see the right wing in this country, they're begging for civil war. But then they actually do something like this. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how this ends, but I'm not sure it's going to end in a uh, pretty way. It's, you know, this is profoundly dangerous and profoundly stupid. Uh, I've also got a little more information on what may be going on through some of my contacts. Oh, it turns it turns out the uh, uh, this nonsense indictment may not be involving Stormy Daniels. It may be involving some other uh, woman who does naked things or did them years and years ago before the uh, uh, statute of limitations expired. And uh, but but apparently under the same theory. So we may be seeing this one and then Stormy Daniels and whatever idiocy comes out of Georgia and whatever idiocy comes out of the Department of Justice. But it, it's pretty clear that they don't think they can beat Donald Trump uh, yeah. normally. So they, they, they've got to arrest him. And, you know, if that's the new rule, you know, they better watch themselves. And yeah. the Republicans better have the stones play by the new rules. Kurt, uh, the, the basis, if it is another woman, that would be a, a developing story. The indictment is under seal, but all indications have been that it had to do with Stormy Daniels. But your information uh, from your sources tells you that regardless of who the woman involved in, it's the same basis, which is a seems so. out of court settlement with a payment and a non-disclosure agreement so that for political purposes or for private personal purposes, uh, the story, whatever story this person might have, will be kept quiet. Last I checked, there's nothing illegal about that. No. Again, this isn't a legal case. He's being yeah. framed. So given that, I got to ask you about the political aspect. Obviously, they're doing this to hurt Donald Trump politically. It's like they've never known the situation in this country and haven't paid attention for the last several years. 
will this really hurt Donald Trump? Uh, I think when we see three or four of these, it is going to hurt Donald Trump. And it, look, let's be honest. It's exhausting having to drop everything and deal with things uh, off on a tangent like Stormy yeah. Daniels and wh whichever bimbo this one involves. Um, I, I, I think after a while, I think right now people will rally to Trump. I think over time, uh, there's going to be some uh, Trump exhaustion as they do this again and again and again. And I think ironically, you know, they may be kicking out the one guy with a ceiling who has a really tough, a really tough road uh, to winning in the general. And yeah. that leaves room open for someone who doesn't. And if it's somebody like Ron DeSantis, well, Ron DeSantis is a vengeful, a vindictive guy who knows how to use power. And they just handed him a whole bunch of new ones. Republicans who already have animus toward Donald Trump, people like Mitch McConnell, Mitt Romney, uh, certain governors uh, in this country who have a bad relationship with him. What should they say right now? I know their instinct is let your political opponent suffer when they're being wounded. Don't jump into it. But they've got to understand the reality of the situation, that they're next. They'll go after Mitt Romney. They'll go after Mitch McConnell in the exact same way, won't they? Of course they will. Uh, no, we have to stand up uh, uh, against this banana republic move, and we need to uh, all do it. Whether you love Donald Trump or hate Donald Trump, this is bigger than Donald Trump. Look, I've criticized the guy about a lot of things, but this is terrible, not only for Donald Trump, it's huge injustice, but for the country. And, you know, every time they yeah. change the rules, I got to emphasize, it always comes back to bite them. Change the rules for the filibuster for the courts. Look who we got on the courts. If you guys want to play horsey, you may find yourself playing horsey and you ain't going to like it. Listen, I think you you like Jim Jordan. I like Jim Jordan, chairman of the Judiciary Committee. I think that he doesn't back down from a fight. I asked him that specifically earlier this week when I had him on the show. So, hey, Congressman Jordan, what's wrong with Republican? You talk about weaponizing the federal government and the Justice Department. What's wrong with Republicans saying, okay, you're going to use these as a weapons? Then when we're in power, we're going to use them as weapons. He said no. We can't do that. That's not what America's all about. Okay, he, he misunderstands what's going on. This is not about inventing charges and bearing false witness and making stuff up. This is about foregoing the, uh, uh, until now, norm of great reluctance to prosecute political opponents. We would roll, bend over backwards not to do it. And look what happened with guys like... Uh, 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 Hunter, Hunter Biden, et cetera, yeah. Yeah. who could have been prosecuted, should have been prosecuted under the Trump administration for the handgun stuff. But he wasn't. Yeah. Throw that deference out the window. Every little thing. Nobody's above the law, right? Yeah. Uh, to that end, Kurt, uh, and we've got about a minute left here, but uh, everyone's pointing out the fact, rightly, that this is a Soros-appointed prosecutor. You have you have one in Los Angeles and George Gascon, Chesa Budin up in San Francisco. We've quaintly just looked at the fact that they've ruined our cities by ignoring the law and not prosecuting crimes or not getting people behind bars. But was this also part of the Soros plan? Get somebody in place, maybe in Manhattan, and they can go after Trump at the federal level? It's, it's truly been out of republic. It, it, it truly is. And we're, we're going to have to relook at our traditional uh, delegation of authority to prosecutors. It's almost unlimited. Uh, it was always kept in check by principle. And since that's not keeping it in check, we're going to have to do it some other way. Let me just uh, just recap here real fast, Kurt Schlichter. Uh, we've had a reference to Onan, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, bearing false witness. Are, are you... Been You've been talking to Dennis Prager a lot lately. Is there a conversion in place that I should know about? I don't. <laughs> oh, I I don't know. I I, I got to get back and finish Leviticus. Yeah, you you're gonna join that round table with Jordan Peterson over there. At the join Daily the round table. You're ours. You stay yeah, at town Kurt Schlichter, hall. Yeah, the biblical one, scholar. <laughs> Kurt That's Schlichter, him. senior columnist over there at uh, themightytownhall.com. Thanks for joining us on a very very busy night, but we need your voice right now. And we'll look for your column. I'm sure it's going to be blistering on this issue. There's more to come. Keep it here on a busy night. It's O'Connor tonight on Salem News Channel.